I'm going to take this little guy and put a little skeleton rig in his body and we will animate him in a few short minutes. Uh, to get your 3D model, just go to File, Import, and drop down to FBX. That is the type of file we'll be using and the type we'll be exporting. Once you have your 3D model in your scene, the first thing you're going to want to do is move the pivot point on the object. Uh, if I go ahead and click on the X button up here at the top, it'll give me a flat view. And if I were to do any kind of translation, rotation, or scale on our little guy here, he's going to move from the center of his body. And we would like for him to move at the bottom. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is lift its body up above like so. And I'm going to move the pivot point down to the origin. And you basically go to Object, Apply, all transforms and it's going to turn all of the transformations um, basically in location and rotation to zero and it's going to put the pivot point right there at the bottom of the origin of the scene. So now that we have our little character we're going to go ahead and put a skeleton rig inside the 3D model. Um, I'm going to start by looking from the side view here and the way to get a rig going is you go up to add and then you drop down to armature and it's going to create one bone and if you see up here we're still in object mode to start editing the skeleton and adding to these bones what we need to do is drop down and go into edit mode and from here we can start moving the bones around and placing them in the rig where um, in places that we see fit now if you notice uh, our bone just disappeared and the way to bring it forward is to go over to the armature panel here and click on viewport display and then we're going to click on in front and that will bring our uh, bones uh, in front of the model at all angles. So what I'm going to do is go back to the side view here and I'm going to continue to add to this armature and the way to do that is first to make sure you're still in edit mode and then we're going to start extruding bones and I'm going to do that by hitting E and E will bring up another bone right here and from this point I want to split it off to go into both eyes and so to add more bones I would just hit E for extrude and again and again I'm working in 3D right now and um, it did a pretty good approximation of where the bones should go um, and uh, so now what I'm gonna do is click on this bone and continue to extrude in the other direction and we're gonna go ahead and bring it up just like so and then I'm going to turn around to the side to make sure all the um, bones are centered in the model. Uh, what I can do here is from the side view bring this one forward and this one forward. When you're editing the model uh, you're moving the bones when you're in edit mode. Uh, you only use the move command. You don't rotate and the only time you rotate is when you're in um, pose mode and with pose mode um, that's exactly what you want to use is rotate so if I come forward it's going to be rotating bone to the next bone um, and you don't use uh, translation you only use rotation so at this point what we want to do is get the model attached to the skeleton and to do that we want to go back to object mode and then select the 3d object use the shift key press on the um, armature and then click right click and go down to parent with automatic weights and it will put the skeleton inside the 3d model and if we go to pose mode now this is where you would pose your model for animation so uh, rotating side to side um, with uh, different types of movement that is layered you can get um, all kinds of interesting effects and the way to put in a keyframe is to hit I and then we're going to animate rotation and I am going to reset the animation to frame one to be right here as a uh, beginning frame and then also as an end frame because we want it to be a complete loop so I'm going to go to frame 60 and also set um, a keyframe now if I play this animation he's going to be staying in place but if I go to frame 30 and rotate the opposite direction um, don't want to make it too far um, and I insert a keyframe and I press play it's going to be a loop back and forth and um, it looks pretty decent uh, we can change the way the, these keyframes move in terms of timing but for now this is just basic animation 
so I'm going to go back to frame uh, one, which he's kind of off to the side a little bit to the left. And I'm going to rotate, uh, set a keyframe for this little eyeball. And I'm going to rotate it out a little bit and go ahead and hit insert. Then I'm going to go to frame 60 again because I want to have the first and last keyframe the same. Um, as we look at this guy's body, as he uh, goes towards the center, we want to have the eyeball rotate in the opposite direction, like so. And so now I'm going to hit uh, I for insert and do a rotation keyframe. And um, if we play it back, let's see what we have. So his eyes just look a little wonk wonky right now. Nothing too serious here. And uh, so let's go ahead and animate the other eyeball. And um, I'm going to go ahead and rotate it like so. Hit insert. And then also go to the last keyframe. Hit insert rotation. And then I'm going to go to frame 30. And I am going to um, rotate his eyeball out a little bit more and hit insert. And so now when we play this animation, everything moves at the exact time. Uh, we want to have like a little drag um, so that uh, an anticipation will be able to add those. So I'm going to go to frame one and um, I'm going to set a keyframe for the base of the eye at, uh, well, let's rotate it out a tiny bit like so. Um, rotation and I'm going to go to the fr frame 60 do the same thing insert rotation and if we look at the animation um, it's going off to the side like so we want to add a little drag so instead of hitting a center keyframe at 30 let's go to 35 and we're going to go ahead and uh, insert a keyframe and we'll see how that looks so as he goes off, it kind of like lags a little bit. And those little kind of moments are really important to put in animation. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the other eyeball. I will go ahead and hit, um, well, first let's go ahead and rotate it a tiny bit to the left to go with the motion, insert rotation for frame one. And then, so I'm using these playback um, little icons here and now I'm going to frame 60 and I'm going to hit uh, rotation again. So here, let's, let's examine, um, this little guy comes out like so. And let's put a lot of drag into this other eyeball and see how this turns out. And we'll do rotation. Um, so now when I press play, kind of see that drag. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and add some animation to the front of the body here. And I'm going to go ahead and do insert rotation for both frame one and frame 60. And then I'm going to play the animation just to see, you know, what kind of movement do I want to get? It's going to be something pretty subtle. It's just to add a little more movement to his body. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it somewhere around frame 30 and, um, whoops, maybe not quite like so. Let's see how that works. So I just added like a tiny little bit of body movement, um, up and down, um, you could probably get into the mechanics of how a snail moves and add a lot more detail. Um, I'm going to go up here and turn off the um, extras that are in the scene, like the bones and everything. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn them back on with this little icon up here in the right. So now that we have our little animated character, we're going to export it for other 3D software programs. And I'm going to take this little guy into AR. And the first thing I like to do is come over here and unfurl all of these little boxes. Um, sometimes Blender can be a little tricky with exporting objects that aren't visible in the hierarchy. So I just like to click at the very bottom once we see everything and then go all the way up to the top and select the entire object. And so to export it as an FBX, I use certain settings. You don't have to bake the animation. Uh, you can leave keyframes on uh, different spots of the timeline without it having to have a keyframe on every single frame like with baking. And the important things to include are over on the right side, it says limit to selected objects and um, click that. And then also click on active collection uh, if you have more than collection. And then what I like to do is click on empty and then armature, mesh, and other. And you can add all of those options by hitting the shift button on your keyboard. Then go down to the bottom where it says bake animation. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click off all these four settings um, underneath bake animation because they're not necessary for um, exporting. And then you give your uh, file a new name. Remember where you